Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to be watching the Fast and Furious, Fast 5 specifically, to see how scientifically accurate the engineering and physics scenes really are. I've always been a huge fan of these movies. Ever since I was a kid, I saw the first one and just watched them all in order in theaters. But I've never actually paid attention to how accurate all of the engineering and like all the physics scenes really are. So this is going to be a first for me as well. Let's get into it. If that bus moving at the velocity that it was hit Paul Walker while he was in that Dodge Challenger, he would be squashed in a second. That bus has much more mass and it's moving at a much higher velocity so all that momentum would be transferred in the collision and it would definitely not end up like that. Um, the Challenger, would, which is the, the black car that the bus hit, it would not remain stationary after a collision like that and the bus wouldn't be tumbling and flipping like this. Copying the information from one ID card to another like that is very much possible. I mean, it happens pretty much every day. Like if you go to a university, they have to make new ID cards all the time. And if you lose one or if you lose like a credit card, they'll just make a brand new one. I don't know if they can make that at the speed at which they just showed right here in the movie. The magnetic strip on your credit card, for example, is so sensitive that if you just take a magnet and rub it over that multiple times, you can actually mess it up. is a little far-fetched it would be possible if both the train and that car are moving at the same speeds like the car that's physically attached to the train not the one that it just removed from the cabin and it's driving away the one that Vince is in I meant like the car that they use to like attach the ropes and it drags the other one out they would have to be moving at exactly the same speed like even a minor difference or just like a bump in the road would completely shift that level in the car that they're dragging out with those cables it would, just, it would just fly away, like they would have no way to actually recover that. I don't know the speed at which that train is moving, but if I had to guess, it would probably be much faster than that car is, but now that it's physically attached to one another, that stunt is not completely far from reality. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, the Corvette he's driving is pretty cool, but for him to actually move out of the train like that, the car that Dom is driving would have to be going at a higher velocity than the train is moving, and it would have to accomplish this inside that small little space that, like, that while it's actually inside the cabin of the train, it would have to accelerate to a speed that's going faster than the train, and that's how it would get out. And there's just not enough distance for the car to achieve that speed. Exactly why your ass ain't been driving. Terrible. Whenever you're drifting around tight corners like that, it's always easier if you have a manual or a stick shift car. And the reason for that is because you need to change the speed of your vehicle very quickly to accommodate those tight turns. Lower gears are much better for accelerating and higher gears are much better for reaching a greater top speed. And because the manual or the stick shift cars have a much better acceleration, that's why you see most of the cars in this movie and in the whole franchise in general are going to be stick shift. And there is a limit to how many times you can upshift a car, but 
they tend to just ignore that limit completely and they just show them they pretty much just show Vin Diesel up shifting a car like 20 times and it does look really cool but you can't do that like every gear has a certain limit of speed that you can achieve so if you're only in the first gear you can't go 100 miles an hour but the higher you upshift the higher the speed will become and the qu more quicker you downshift the less your speed will become that i i don't think there is any world possible where those two cars can actually pull a safe like that now we know from earlier that this safe was actually built into a wall and that those two cars dragged it out of the wall and they drove it in and around rio and somehow it ended up over here the biggest thing for me is that the safe is not on wheels so the force of friction between the bottom of the safe and the pretty much the roads that they're taking this thing on has got to be incredible and I do not believe that those two cars have enough power to actually overcome that drag. But not only that, it's doing all these turns and it's flipping and there are obstacles in the way. It's just moving in and all throughout the streets of Rio. That's just so far-fetched. I feel like they just, they just ignored physics completely in this scene. It's, this is simply not going to happen. NOS is used in pretty much every Fast and Furious movie, and what that stands for is nitrous oxide. The symbol for that is N2O. What's normally happening in your car is that oxygen from an intake valve is meeting up with your fuel and it's creating controlled explosions, which is moving the pistons of your car and powering it to move forward and backward. The oxygen that goes into that valve comes from the air around us, which the air around us is about 20% in oxygen. Nitrous oxide is 33% or one third oxygen. Because nitrous oxide has more oxygen in it, it's meeting up with your fuel, it's burning more fuel, and it's gonna move the pistons much faster because there's more intense explosions that it's creating. And this is why the nitrous oxide will power your car to just really have it launch. How they show the nitrous oxide being injected into the cars in all the Fast and Furious movies is, is very accurate. That is how it's going to be used inside of the engine. Now the amount that they're using is actually so much that it will for sure blow up your engine. So what's going to happen is with all of that oxygen and all that fuel you're burning, it's going to really overheat and it, those explosions will be way too intense for your car to control. When it comes to scientific accuracy, this movie just didn't care about it. <laughs> it just threw physics out the window. It made no difference to the producers or director whatsoever. But the thing about it is that it didn't matter, right? I mean, the whole point of like watching the Fast and Furious movies is not to watch it to be like, oh, that car shouldn't be going that fast. Like, no, we, you want to see that car just take off, <laughs> right? Like, it, the whole point is to watch fast cars do their thing. Despite there being pretty much no scientifically accurate scenes in this movie besides how they inject the NOS into the fuel intake of your car, I still like it. <laughs> it's still a fun movie to watch because like I said, you're watching it to watch like the fast cars just do their thing and go really fast. This is for sure my favorite movie in the whole franchise and I haven't watched the new one yet like uh, Shaw and Hobbs, but of course I'm gonna watch it because I'm a fan of the franchise and I just want to see how they move it forward. If there's any other movies or TV show episodes that you want me to watch, go ahead and put it in the comments below. I love doing these kind of videos, they're really fun and I just can't wait to see what more we can come up with. Thank you guys for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Stay fresh and stay golden.